Are you ready yeah. to start? Nice. Yeah, what are you, are you gonna I'm going to start going? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we're starting now. Um, yeah, you see here a heavy dele delegation <laughs> from uh, Worm for you. But this is nothing compared with uh, some of our visits because the last time we went to Amsterdam we came with uh, 15 or 16 people. So this is a slight uh, between, uh, slight, slight reasonable, slightly. Um, we come from Rotterdam. I noticed that Taku was kind of not saying that name. Why is that Taku? <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know about it either. <laughs> um, we exist since 10 years. To prove that we exist, I just put the web page here. Um, and we are a strange organization because compared to Cafe Otto, for instance, we have a, a situation of luxury. We are well funded. We have, uh, we have a lot of bits of paper. Yeah, so that's why we have <laughs> to, to all those papers. Um, and we have, at the moment, a nice building, but we're gonna, gonna leave that building uh, this year, we think. And maybe going, even going to a bigger and a nicer place, but that's, that's not sure yet. On the other hand, we are a place, well, how could you say that? How, where can you, uh, Rotterdam is a, I lived there all my life, so I can say what I want about it, I think. So it's, it's, it's everybody, somebody here has been in Rotterdam here? <laughs> <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven. What's the general? <laughs> I, I, think it's, I think it's one of the most disliked places in the Netherlands. Maybe. It's, probably, it's not cozy at all, that's good. There's lots of harbors, that's good. But the people that live there are not so interested in what we do. So we had to force ourselves upon the town because nobody asked for a place like Worm. And if you want to know what we are, we are a place for, very generally said, for the experimental arts. Um, we are artists ourselves. So no, not, that's me, not me. You're not. This, <laughs> well, Hank and this, me, this we are musicians, and, and Peter is a curator. No. <laughs> yes, you are, Peter, you are a curator. Yes. Well, well the, and we didn't we didn't give our names as well. This is uh, Lucas, Lucas, Peter, Lucas, Peter, Hank. Peter and Hank. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. So uh, nobody was asking for a place like Rotterdam, for a place like Worm, and uh, it took us uh, a big fight to to <laughs> to to arm where we are now. Huh? And how did it uh, begin? Yes. That's a, I won't go into all the story, but basically it means that a, some little organizations came together and formed WARM. This in, in some way, WARM is an umbrella. For at this moment, we are, I think, five sections. Is it true? We have the film programming, we have the music programming, we have film producing and music producing, and we have uh, a media lab. The Media Lab is, has, has, a, has, a, has a bit of a hit at the moment because they developed something called the Suicide Machine. And it's a, a little application you can use to kill all your friends on, for instance, Facebook or MySpace. <laughs> so that's, at the moment, that's their, that's their hit. It was shut down by Facebook. Huh? Yeah. The Facebook, yeah, yeah. So I, actually we're forbidden at the minute from using Facebook, by Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Um, by the lawyers, yeah. um, but the, I mean, it's not, it, it's not like a when we when Lucas says uh, phone production or music production, it's not phone production or music production in a sense that most people would think think of it. I don't know what most people think. Um, I mean, if we have a we have a film film lab where um, basically you can um, you can shoot shoot film. We have a lot of 16 millimeter um, projectors. Or not projectors, sorry, cameras. Also a lot of 60 millimeter projectors. Mm -hmm. But um, so you can you can shoot a film, you can edit it, or you can develop it, you can edit it in a really DIY, um, handmade way, and people can come there whenever they like and uh, work there for free. Um, and the, the same is true of the, uh, the the sound studio, which is well, maybe maybe Hank wants to tell a bit more about the. Well, recently we um, we got a, our hands on a um, 
synthesizer on the lab uh, with old uh, analog synthesizers. Um, it used to belong to the Center for Electronic Music. Contact or ham? <laughs> yes, thanks. How do you translate that? I don't know the word for contact or ham. <laughs> and, um, well, we invite uh, musicians and other people to come and work in the studio yeah. and work with the machines, record it, or make uh, compositions. Um, um, there are a few very special synthesizers, like the ARP 2500, which is a huge, huge old uh, synthesizer. And we got a lot of modular, sy modular systems, which means you uh, have to generate or make your own sounds through uh, um, voltage control generators. So this, these, these machines are pre, uh, they came before the, what you know, everybody knows as a synthesizer or electronic music device or even software. These, these are the real things. And, and this, this sort of, I mean, the fact that we had, had the studio developed in a really ad hoc way, um, it wasn't, you know, a project to develop it or something. It, it, happened, it just happened that the studio actually ran out of funding. And we we had this space yeah. we had the space and um, and they moved in with us. No, no, you forget uh, one thing. Okay, sorry. A long time ago, <laughs> we already had this plan to do residencies. Only we okay. we had a few computers and that was it. So it was really good that Sam, which was actually uh, it was also in Amsterdam. Maybe some people yeah, still remember yes, it. Yes. Um, it was really good that they came together with us. But the plan from us was already there. A long okay. time. Yes. But, it, but, it, yes. but it also developed in an ad hoc. Yeah, it, but it, the other good thing was meeting the same was also because we do radio, we make radio stuff uh, in a slightly parasitical way, which means we have a radio magazine and we send it to lots of radios every month, for instance, uh, Resonance. Resonance. Yeah, yeah. And, but also we make radio plays for national radio and for something called Concert Center, which is the, which is the only thing in, in Holland that's left for, for art radio, and uh, I think they're kicked to the internet now, or not? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so this is one, this is part of our production, we, we make radio, and people that we invite to do residencies, sometimes they make radio pieces for us, and sometimes they make radio plays for us, and also we're working now on doing residencies where people can actually prepare a live gig. For instance, it was very funny that um, the, I forgot your name, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have invited uh, Housewolf, and he's coming in June, for instance. So. Um, we, yeah, we we also have a sh we also have a, sh a shop, um, and and we we archive we archive all our um, our concerts and make them available via a web session, but it's also. I have to do talking again, huh? Yeah, do you want to say something? It's also a bit ad hoc. I think we launched it before it was really ready. Well, that's the way to start. I mean, you, you yeah. organize concerts, and then, like uh, you were saying, how, how are we going to do it with archiving, recording, and make a, make, maybe make a record label? Well, these things we, we thought about as well. But right now, I'm, I'm um, just live casting everything we do, archiving it at the same time, of course, and then after that, um, uh, edit it, <laughs> edit it as, 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 <laughs> oh yes, he didn't have to plug in, uh -oh. yeah. Don't show that, Peter. Come back, come back. <laughs> and every, everything's open source, the, uh, uh, the Yeah, there's stuff you need to think about when you do something like that, archiving it and, and, and make it available. It's like, how you do it? Is, is it downloadable or streaming? Um, we choose for streaming uh, media. Um, and we, we do not ask per se for permission to um, broadcast the material from the concerts. Scroll down. Oh, yes, yeah. What are you doing? Scroll down. I'm just. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to play a clip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's usually his task, too. Yeah, anyway, yeah, we, have, uh, yeah we have a cinema as well. Um, you going to show some pictures then? Or yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, we have, a, we have a, um, a, a, a small cinema with just with 30, 30 seats, and uh, which was also sort of like the film work parts, also just stuff um, really gathered together. Like we borrowed the 35 millimeter projector because they, you know someone didn't have the storage space for it, of course, 
and um, and yeah, we we have a weekly um, program. It, it's mainly um, it's it's mainly stuff that wouldn't otherwise normally be um, be be available um, uh, like normal distribution in the cinemas in the Netherlands. So it, it has a it has a kind of experimental um, orientation, but also for instance like this Vera Chitilova. Um, it's you know it's it's a it's it's an archive um, uh, it, it's it's from an archive it's not normally uh, distributed. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just clicking around. <laughs> Show them we organize a studio event oh, yeah. on the 20th of March. This is really interesting. Like here, popular noise for the masses. Um, yeah, so there's actually. I think a lot of the things that happen in, in Cafe Otto and a lot of the artists who played there also have, have played with us, like Kami Kami. And, um, what for, for me, is an important part of, of our what we do, Worm, for uh, uh, the outside look, is also the shop, which I was wondering, um, Hamish, is it still there in Cafe Otto? Oh, uh, no, it's not. Ah, okay, no. because that's what I thought was really nice. Mm. But, Sorry. Yeah. Oh. And if somebody plays, there's always a lot of balloons. <laughs> no, no audience, but a lot of we can pay for the balloons. <laughs> exactly. Um, That's the funding. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to start the slide, what are you doing now, slide, the slideshow. So, but uh, okay, maybe some questions about. Uh, is it very clear this story? No, of course not. <laughs> is it what I mean? Huh? Because how come that, uh, that you get so much funding these days? Uh, that's funny, this, this, good, this oh. picture is here because three or four years ago we went into a new building and we used this uh, very hip uh, architects who were into uh, recycling <laughs> and also we did a lot of work ourselves uh, 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 to, to make the, the interiors. And it's silly to say because it doesn't have to do with content. But because we had, and it's a really old building, it's from the 17th century, which is quite special for what it is. What, what did you do? But because we are in this building, we got a good press. And we were in architecture magazines, and we were, every everybody from the politics thought, oh, what a nice people. But they, <laughs> they don't know fuck about uh, improvised music or experimental cinema, but, but suddenly we were happening, man. Oh, you look, uh, it looks good. That's a the, these are these are a bit slick. Um, we we the, 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 we we rent out the venue as well, also as a as a small kind of subsizing thing. Um, and and these are this is the this is the cinema. Um, oh, this is our this is the film work. That's our um, where I'm working with Esther. That's your desk, Peter. That's my desk. Sorry. <laughs> And that's the toilets. Um, every, the, that's the activity center. Who is it? Oh, that's Adam Bowman. It's a month of specialist. Sorry, it's just a dump of. Um, but there's nothing to do with it whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're all pictures from uh, not, from yeah. programs, okay. but not, yeah, anyway, sorry. So, and the w I can say a little bit about the way we work. Um, it's not also that we are the only people that make the program. So we have some, we invite people to come over and do their own curating sometimes. If they, and basically we want to be, uh, uh, kind of easy to to uh, how you say that um, to benader to approach to approach yeah. so if people come to us with a good plan it's it's yeah you can talk <laughs> you're distracting the people from my serious <laughs> talk Peter <laughs> uh, yeah and you and yourself how does the schedule sort of evolve like how often is the film programming in the concert um <laughs> Yeah, the the the, um, the the film program is the only element of the program which is set really, and, and it's every Wednesday, um, and the rest is just uh, de depending on it's 
we we program really uh, really freely. We don't have like uh, set evenings or things like that. It's depending on what on when people are there or when like we when we can invite them. Two three times a week. Something and, and like it, that. And it's done really independently with yeah. the. There's a few different people programming things, and they just uh, set it up, and um, and then then we're lucky that that we have um, people supporting us in uh, um, in some parts of the in the site in some parts of the organization. But um, but we're, the programming is really free, which which is um, which is really nice. Um, and it's gen it's generally, I mean, I guess generally the we're generally um, well. We're really lucky to have have the space and be able to do these things. So we have a tendency towards then doing stuff that otherwise wouldn't be um, wouldn't be possible. For sure. Um, so also in that way, uh, well, make, uh, making the uh, well, supporting the artists and also um, bringing them to. Uh, but yeah, sorry, it's not really. Okay, let's take the first question. <laughs> What's the question then? Yeah, it's, it's, um, there's some evidence of uh, how often you are affected as uh, over and over, isn't it? Sorry? Oh, yeah. What you say? Open yeah, yes. we, we have a we have a website. That, well, I think we have several hundred words. <laughs> Everything's sort of. Uh, well, we have a, a website, Open Org, where you can download um, kind of all our organizational plans and kind of uh, things that we use for accounting and for, um, uh, yeah, it's like basically anything that you would need to, to set up something um, yourself. Um, mm -hmm. But have, have, you, have you looked at it? Yeah, sure. Ah. Yeah. Has it, have you got anything? Uh, have you got anything uh, from yeah. it? <laughs> some, some people and, and the others today are interested in organizational sides of, uh, of realizing places like, like this. What they did with Open Org is they documented everything. They they did themselves to organize their uh, foundation and the way they worked with Bart and everything. So they give kind of a framework for other organizations starting up to, to build up on the share and they, the, the knowledge they built up uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but that's related it. to this, I, I guess at, at, at some point you were like uh, Cafe Otto, really struggling and. Uh, Things uh, pushing your ideas, put a, putting lots of words in, mm -hmm. in it without subsidy, and now you've evolved in, in the ten years. Uh, but we always got subsidies. Without subsidies, we couldn't have even not even have started. In in the beginning, we were when we were making a music program. We were called Dodorama. It was in a small room, a bit like this, and um, we still got some money from from the council. Everybody was a volunteer. That was true, but still we got money to make the program, because uh, that, that's the that's the funny thing. A place like this is really could really start in in towns like Rotterdam. On the other hand, the program, if we would be in London or Paris, I mean pe people would be uh, probably quite enthusiastic about it, but we could never live there because those places don't do this kind of <coughs> subsidizing or that's a, that's the funny thing. So that's the dilemma. And um, well, at the moment there is like 15 people working for us in, in, in Worm, and then plus stagiaire, plus volunteers. So it's 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 became bigger, you could say. So but doesn't it bother you that you're so dependent on funding? Well, if they stop the money, we stop with the with the place. So what? <laughs> yeah, I mean the money is there to be used, and it's better that we use it than anybody else. <laughs> yeah. What? Limitations, because you get funding. Are there some limits that can be irritating? Of course, the limitations are. As, it's not that I can tell you, oh, you cannot do this or that, because that's that won't work anyway. But a big. Uh, amount of the money we get is spent on controlling that money. So there are like three or four people only working for money. And that's because if you get subsidized in Holland beyond a kind of limit, then you have to have an accountant uh, declaration. And so everybody, everything has to go to a kind of, uh, how you call that? Uh, and, uh, it has to be 
dumb. The word, Peter. Yeah, um, uh, um, <laughs> it, it has to be accountable. Uh, but yeah, it, no, but it, it, has, uh, yeah, it has to be it has to be agreed on with the accountant that you do it like this. But it, but it's it's not that it doesn't really it doesn't really affect the the programming. But it, it just as like it says, it means that you have to have a lot of things in place. Well, you you, to, you throw uh, a lot of money at nothing basically. <coughs> that's yeah. a bureaucracy that's unavoidable, and some people have a job out of it, so that's nice for them. <laughs> But basically, you want to give the artists all the money, but forget it. I think we are underpaying our artists. I mean, it's not like uh, in the old days that everybody got paid normal. That, that doesn't happen anymore. And we are... Uh, yeah, we are even yeah things, things still have to be done really pragmatically. Yeah. Like also with the, the films and things, a lot of them... Could, because also the, with the organizing... Really individual film screenings, like just one-off film screenings, which are in a way also a very live thing. You, a, a lot of the money that ends up going on transportation costs for the prints and that kind of thing. So you, so a lot of the time I, I get things, especially from from Germany, because it, the transportation is a lot less, and you know it's you're dependent on maybe or not dependent, but you always have to work out uh, ways. Like you read that that someone will be. Um, you know, um, uh, in, in like uh, doing a screening in Belgium, and then you contact them and um, try and get them to come up, uh, you know, to Rotterdam and things as well, um, because we couldn't afford, of course, to the the, the flight costs and that yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And and then they bring the prints with them, and so it's all always very very uh, pragmatic still. Um, but but it's with but with the yeah. but with the pragmatism, you can. Do really really good good stuff. Mm. Um, it's a nothing stuff. Would you really just give up on the whole project and say, well, so yeah? Because in the form in the form it is. I mean, of course, the things wouldn't. Um, I would well, I mean, Lucas is speaking. I would leave the country. I would say. <laughs> 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 Sounds stupid, but I mean, I, I lived in Rotterdam all my life, so if. What do, you, do I have to do there if, if there's not warm? Nothing. <laughs> but we, uh, we were working on it since 19... When did we start Dodorama? 94, 95? So this was the, the foreganger. What is the foreganger? Of, uh, the predecessor. The predecessor of warm. So if you work so long, I mean for me personally, then if they stopped, I mean you get, it, it got better and better. But there was always the chance that we could be kicked out of everything. And that's still like, it's still like that, which is okay for me. So that's a good way to, so, okay, maybe the critic can be that we are institutionalized in some ways, but I don't think more than is uh, necessary, so. But it seems like um, the Dutch government is really trying to cut as much yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I've been I've been here. Um, I, I've been in the Netherlands the last ten years. I'm originally from Belfast, and uh, I've I've seen things really sl slide. I mean, it's uh, there's been a political slide, of course, to the to the right and um, a, a liberalisation of things. And, and you see you, you see a lot of the dismantling. I mean, yeah. also of a lot of things, also healthcare and things, yeah. but. Also, also there, and yeah, I think the situation could could change very easily. Well, have you guys had to do anything to defend yourselves? A lot. To prove that you deserve this a lot. Oh, a lot. I mean, that's but what a lot. I mean, of we are not the fighters. We have two the, two guys. Eh? Can we say that? <laughs> who, who who did most of the fighting because they were uh, really onto it. The Hayo and Mike, uh, they are the, the artistic and the, the, the financial directors. They worked a lot on it, and it was. Killing them almost, yes. But they did it well, so. Uh. I seem to remember that you put warm up for sale, the Dutch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you, you could, you that. could, you could buy. It. Um, I mean, we, we've also been in a lot of uh, different buildings, um, and we've, you know, uh, well, you, you saw the pictures of the star. We, I mean, we, we also put a lot of work into. Uh, the buildings ourselves and the constructions and things. Thankfully, I started afterwards. I'm not very good at building, but um, no. 
but um, yeah, we at one stage we uh, the building that we are in it, we we got it um, rent free, um, but it's part of a kind of a gentrification process in the in the area, and they built they built apartments all around us, so uh, we were also faced with the position of not having a home to go to, so we. We kind of put ourselves up a, uh, as an organisation. We put ourselves up for sale on eBay. No bids yet. But uh, but I don't think we had some bids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So the, there have been a lot of moments where our future ha has been really insecure. Yes. Um, uh, but I think uh, we'll move on to the panel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I thought it was really nice to see sort of the, um, the, the almost the gradations of um, ways to organize with a very personal approach and then the sort of DIY and then the, the Dutch model. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, but it's also really... Uh, yeah, 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 but also of course in that structure there's a way to do it and I think um, also at the start we sort of struggle within this kind of giant bureaucracy and this funding system. And um, I, I, don't know, I don't know how I should open up, but also um, I was organizing a lot of stuff in Japan where there's no money at all as well. And so Holland seems just this amazing playland of just um, making money. But then there is a situation of things going down and you know we have to constantly justify or prove, especially for the experimental arts. Um, thing to have to do to say that you know, we, we have to prove that experimentation is important support. Um, but maybe I could ask you guys, um, how do you, um, because you guys all support sort of the, the non-mainstream sort of work, uh, but you're also dealing with trying to keep it uh, accessible and open and connect to sort of a community of an audience. So uh, maybe some of you guys could talk about how, how you do that. How do you keep a, an open audience? How do you, um, Cafe Authority sort of mentioned some of it. Um, how do you enhance a, a community, also make it grow and um, open it up a bit? Mm, I think, um, if I may. Um, mm. If you may. Um, we, we were facing uh, part of the same problems as Cafe Auto did in the beginning, where we were looking at a 50 plus male audience. Uh, let's call it 40 plus. Well, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, suddenly we decided, well, this is no longer what we want. We want more people, younger people, and we want to uh, diversify uh, what we, we, we put on, on stage. So we, we were pretty hardcore improvised music venue, and we took it a bit away from from that, still having that, but then we, we also decided to get, pay more attention to the more popular electronic uh, music, popular experimental electronic music uh, scenes from all over the world, and um, just put that on stage as well, next to the improvised uh, music scenes from Holland and Europe, which seemed to work very well. Very well. Also, we organized a, a party parties, sort of like con context uh, concerts, which means that you sort of like integrate a DJ culture into the more uh, experimental scene, which worked pretty well as well to, to get a younger audience. And um, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, just, I, I don't think know. Diver diver diversity is a, is, a, is a good word for mm. good tactic. And how, how important is, is your collaboration with art institutes, uh, art schools in this? Because you also started collaborating with the, uh, the art academy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. For me, it's really nice. It's really, I really love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because if you can say what is interesting about Rotterdam, audience-wise, then it's most of the time, a lot of, uh, mostly foreign students that come there to, to go to the conservatory or, some, or to the Pietzwaard Institute. Mm -hmm. And from, especially from the Pietzwaard Institute, we had a lot of really good stuff going on. It's, it's just a small group. I mean, it's only maybe 50 
Yeah, but, but it's the people that are active, that go to, to staff, that also do project themselves, yeah. and that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Mm. Working as volunteers as well. And yeah. yeah, and we, we sort of become a, we, we, I guess we changed as well from, from being just a venue to somewhere where people can really uh, work and, and produce things, and this gives a really different atmosphere to mm. it. you were talking about sort of the fear of becoming too institutionalized mm -hmm. and uh, you're talking about some of the, the uh, drawbacks that you see uh, with large organizations. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that, what do you see in sort of the London scene and large organizations. And, um, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, even, don't want to name specific things, but, <laughs> but we've, I mean, we've, we've, we've collaborated with some larger, larger, more established organizations in the past. And, um, and where we've been asked to maybe program something for somebody else outside of Cafe Otto. And, and we're, you know, this, this, this thing where you say, this is, you know, they say, who, who would you like to program? We say, well, you know, we'd like to suggest these people. And they say, okay, well, um, we've got to refer that to this person. And then that person says, we've got to refer that to this person. And then three weeks later, they say, well, we kind of like that, but you know somebody a bit that's a bit more like this. And they, without, without really having a clear idea of what it is that they do want. They, they kind of, and then you say, well, maybe this is a bit more like that, and then it goes through the same process, and then say, well, that was kind of interesting, but maybe a bit more like that, you know? <laughs> and, and sort of, you know, three months later, they, they kind of come to, a, you come to some kind of agreement because you managed to have a conversation directly with the person that you should have talked to maybe in the first place. And I mean, that, that's, that to me, I mean, that, like that, we found that frustrating, like as, as, as programmers, but it just seemed to be the complete opposite to, to how we would work where it's normally, it's very direct, and, and because of that, you can make decisions very quickly. Um, so, I, I mean, it's, it's not to say that big organizations can't work or that funding automatically results in, in, in places becoming like that, but it, it's, it's, it's also just through your own experience and, and the way, you know, we, we've developed a way of working over that, what is really a very short space of time, it's under two years but it feels like you know, a decade for us because it's been incredibly hard work. But, but over that period of time, we've, we've got used to working in a certain way, and I, I think it would, it would mean handing over a lot of... It, it could potentially mean handing over a lot of the control that we feel that we have at the moment. And, 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 and maybe in some respects, like, there's, a, there's also a danger in, in running things the way that we run things. I think maybe, maybe there's also that you become too protective of it. You, you identify it with, with it all too much yourself. It becomes very personal. And and the, and there's the, you know it, 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 I'm, I'm, I don't want to be sort of um, saying presenting this is the model that we that, that we run it as, as being in any way superior it, it, or it's just we we run it as as we do partly out of necessity and and I, and we've developed a sort of um, I don't want to say we've developed the ethos and the principles purely out of necessity. Like that there, there, there are kind of there are some, some some kind of core kind of ideologies about the way we, we approach things. But but it is also just just a sort of reflection of, of the reality of, of, of where where we're doing this and 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 and, and how and what we have to yeah. do in order to survive. Yeah. But how, how long do you think you can keep up this this working <laughs> slaving? <laughs> Well, that, that, uh, where do you see yourself in 10 years? We have to change of how we work. Um, say that if we had a funding or more money to employ more people, uh, where we could spend all our time, dedicate our time to programming. Mm -hmm. So we could program much better. Mm -hmm and more quali quality program. Mm -hmm. Also, we have to think about um, the pro proportion of the program, how much we could kind of um, make, not money, but like, you know, make it kind of um, um, feasible, mm -hmm. you know, sustainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But <laughs> I don't know for how long. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean the, the thing is, like, the whole thing is in flux and change. I mean, when we, when we open... <coughs> We, we, we were, as I say, we were there from 9 o'clock in the morning, physically in the space from 9 o'clock in the morning, making copies for people whilst we were trying to sort of program stuff in the evening, and then we'd leave at like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. so, so we were, and we were doing that seven days a week. Now, now, that, now that the situation has changed since then. I, I don't think 
we could have kept doing that for much longer mm. than we did because it's it's pretty insane. And hopefully in, in a year's time we'll look back and think, oh God, how did we do that? That was pretty insane. I mean, it, it's getting consistently busier and, and as a result, we, it does mean we can begin to employ a few people. And so, you know, we might be able to change the way that we do it without actually getting any funding. It might just be that it can become, on, it, on its own terms, completely independently, it can, it can generate enough of an income to help pay a few more salaries and, and, and take a little bit of the burden off our shoulders. I mean, one of, one of the frustrations at the moment is, like, right now, and, and always I've got this sort of sense of guilt because I've got mountains of emails from musicians that I'm not having time to respond to them all. Or, you know, and I'm responding to things late, and there's good things that get missed because, um, because we're running the bar every night. And because, you know, it's, it's just, that's, that's just the way it is. And, and, and so, yeah, it, it could work better. And I, I don't think, ultimately, I, I don't think it's sustainable for a particularly long time how we're doing it. I think it, I think it will have to change. But I think it, I think it will, and I don't think, I don't think it necessarily has to be through funding. It might be through funding, but it might mm. just be through it might be becoming, becoming, yeah, becoming, becoming busier. But mm. Mm. we'll see. And um, Daniela, um, you're sort of bringing the con sort of the opposite model of you're placing things in um, places that usually wouldn't host sort of these events or music. But um, what are sort of the, the and, and, and to an earlier question you answered, you know, that you sort of helped the logistics and facilitate it uh, happen uh, for the artists, but what are some of the, the tensions or the challenges uh, that you face when you do something in another country, in another context, and uh, for example, the Yang Jun's piece, um, you know, he's really bringing this piece into a working environment. Um, is there something that yeah, I think um, the real challenge, uh, it's a little bit also asking this question of uh, how sustainable is the project. Because, um, because um, <coughs> not having a fixed venue, it means each time um, to go in a place and also if it's, if it's not an empty, even the, the empty storefront, I mean, even an empty store, you have to obtain it. In a way, you have to have it. You have to uh, negotiate. It's, it's. I mean, the 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 most challenge of this project is the negotiation to the places and to the partner institutions to make. Uh, and this is like also uh, has to happen. Uh, not having a sort of um, basis. I mean, uh, fix fix place to as a reference. Uh, but um, kind of creating this structure which in a way function but uh, still um, is in, it's being in the position of an outsider in a way because you, you don't have like a place where, 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 uh, where the project can be recognized um, but I think it's also, it's also part, of, part of the challenge I mean it's, it's really uh, and um, the, the, it is interesting this question of how diver the diversity of, of the audience because uh, doing, by doing this um, it's a way to kind to try and look to a very 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 different uh, audience like not the one that will uh, normally go into, into, into a concert hall um, and another challenge is um, it's really now uh, after uh, one year that I'm uh, the, the Burkage is receiving some uh, some some invitations to to some festivals to 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 do something there, which is put me uh, in a difficult position. <coughs> For example, there is a festival in Bucharest called uh, Ars Telefonica, which uh, used the telephone booths. Uh, in, the, in the city to, to invite artists to, to produce works that are, that are there. And uh, I mean, for me, it's a fantastic context, but if I uh, accept this invitation, it means that it's not anymore the artist uh, choosing the location. So, <coughs> and, but at the same time, at the same time, it's an opportunity to, to do it, to find a par uh, partner institutions and to, to be there and to realize the project. So this is kind of uh, 
the, the contradiction which is part of the, of the, of the project. Um, maybe we could talk about also the, the, the locality of, um, uh, I mean, Hackney has, is kind of a up and coming place now. Yeah. Um, you were saying two years ago it was kind of sketchy and, and dodgy, uh, but I know there was a project that I think it was a local project making a bakery or something. Uh, nearby, sort of oh, doing yeah, the, yeah, the they oh, planted the, the, yeah, yeah. the wheat. What is it? Barley. Barley. But all that stuff's connected up with the barbican, isn't it? I mean, there's, there's weird things going on in that area now. Because, I mean, it is getting like... Um, I mean, it's changed. We, we, I mean, we've lived around there for almost 10 years, really. Um, and, and it's changed a lot over that period of time. I mean, it's, it's a typical thing that happens not just in London, but I think cities all over the world. It's like artists moving in, getting trendy, and then it gets gentrified, and it's, it's you know, this, this boring old story. But, um, but yeah, but it's certainly over the, over the of sort of very recently, it, it seems to sort of have accelerated a lot. But, but what's interesting is some of these big old, very big institutions, like the Barbican, have started to sort of try and do off-site projects. And there's, there's been this, this, this trend for like West End galleries for some time, that they have their sort of serious West End headquarters, and then they have their kind of and mm. their kind of wacky kind of East End like warehouse where they do a few projects, and and that that that's kind of started to happen as well. So I mean it's it's yeah I mean it's it's, it's changed quite a lot, and, and I mean we're quite cynical about that whole process, but at the same time we have to realise that we're on one level we're benefiting from it, in in the sense that. Um, Although ultimately we might, we might get stung by it because our rent might suddenly jump up when it gets reviewed in a few years' time, and that might be the point at which it does become unsustainable. But um, but in, in in the sort of short term, the the fact that that area in itself has, has become talked about it help, helps us, it, especially in, in attracting new audiences. So um, so it's a, it's a kind of yeah it's a double-edged thing. How about with you guys for Rotterdam? Um, do you feel that there's sort of a more of an understanding from the from the city that you guys are sort of a creating a, a culture and sort of helping the, the locality, or do they still want to move you around? And, um, some people want, and some people don't. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I guess that we've just been able that we've been able to exist the the ten or um, years and then separately uh, before that maybe five or six years um, it, it has given some kind of uh, momentum and, and what we've been able to do how we've been able to transform the, the building that we're in into something which was just a shell in, into the, you know the space that you see it, it, it maybe yeah it, it, it has and, and the, the work that um, we've, we've sort of done or the advocational kind of work that we've done has, has really helped and and so we're in this strange situation now where we're we're moving a little bit from the edge of the edge of the city centre as well to actually right into the main street uh, with uh, where, where the main art gallery is. That's not sure yet, but, but, but it's could but, happen. But there we're sure. also still yeah. in the basement, but, uh, and we're we're still under a lot of um, pressure there, and it, it might not go through. But but that is mainly through the support of the city. Um, you, you could see it as a strategy, but it isn't. Yeah. But <laughs> it, you could see it as a strategy that we are kind of growing and growing and growing. And if it all works out well, we are so big that it's going to be really difficult to get rid of us. But uh, still, yeah, the really idea that they want to get rid of us is always there. It's yeah. always there. We shouldn't expect anything, I think. No. So that's why you did the, the suicide machine. Well, that was uh, in case, just in case. You know. Well, that was uh, oh, no, yeah, yeah. That was a web uh, two point zero thing. Yeah. Uh, but that's okay. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I was really interested to maybe um, get something from each of you of how you um, attract audiences, because um, you know at the bar in Fury, basically you got these audiences.
I'm imagining it's people from the community outside of Rotterdam mostly. Well, Rotterdam people, no. lots of students. You're, you're kind of saying the answer already. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. But we're kind of jealous because, you know, the thing with yeah. London is you're the only place in London, and London has 15 million people, or, or I don't know how much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the, the percentage of those people that were already interested in this music is, is minuscule. Well, <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, well, yeah it's, 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 it's true. I mean, yeah, it's, there, is, there is an audience there. And, 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 and I mean... We're not, we're not relying on the, on that young kind of trendy East End audience either, and I mean we don't want that to be to be the core of our of the people coming. What's quite nice about the audiences is that, that they do travel from other parts of London, they do come in from other parts of the country, and sometimes they do travel from abroad, depending mm. on what you've got. So we don't want to look around and think this is a bunch of art students who are just hanging out in Hackney and just coming down to Café Otto because they think it's a cool place to hang out. Um, and, 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 and that's reflected also in, in, in the way people respond to music. I mean, people are very... One of the things that Café Otto's kind of got known for is on the whole audience is extremely quiet and focused on the music. And I, I think if it became simply a, a kind of cool place to hang out, that would stop happening. So, I mean, we're, we're like... Um, but, but, but as, as a result of the fact that more people are going out in the area, generally I think some of those people that come from the West End would have actually maybe felt quite intimidated about coming to, 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 to the specific location of where we are. Actually, it, it doesn't seem quite so frightening to come out to, to, to Dalston for the night out. So, but we, we, yeah, we, don't, yeah we, don't want to, we, we don't want to become simply a kind of um, a hipster's kind of hangout. So. And yeah, we, we still, I mean, it's still still difficult for us, um, sometimes to get an audience. I'm um, mostly programming I mean, music. I, I, I do the film programming and also um, the kind of more imp improv, um, electroacoustic and jazz oriented programming. And there isn't, there isn't like a, a huge community of artists in, in rather than that, that are, are interested in those things. There, there are, there is a music academy um, but it, there's a tendency towards, you know, much more traditional things, and um, so we're, we're, we're still, it, it, it's still quite a, s a small group. And I think, I think what we, what you hope is that you offer something that's um, a strong enough experience that when people come, they will, you know, they will uh, come come back again. That it, they, because uh, there are, of course, a lot of barriers and. Uh, or people's perceptions of these kind of uh, music, but um, and and also when we 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 do a huge variety of programming. So the thing is as well that um, you can't come on a specific night and they have a specific expectation. It's it's always very very different. We had and, some, and sort of, well, we had some experiments by doing yeah. improv stuff and something totally different. Yeah, and the, that 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 worked. That worked quite well. Depend, as well. Depends it's on who's it, 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 it depends as well. But um, yeah, there's a lot of time when people are exposed to things and they can really enjoy them. But um, yeah, it's 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 still something that we uh, have to struggle struggle with. I think what what is important here also is not when you say attract the audience. It's not a question of um, Quantity, but but more about uh, what you want to offer. I mean, it's more about the experience that you to give okay. to the audience, and also how this experience can be different from what they expect. Mm. So I think uh, maybe this is also uh, something, at least for me. Mm. Uh, but I think this is really in common with the, the three projects mm. actually. Mm. Yeah. So maybe I'll open up to some more questions. Not happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just wondering about, um, I mean, sometimes you have these venues which have some kind of membership thing that you just pay like 10 euros a month or so, and then you just come, come and see every concert you like, really. Have you ever considered that kind of approach, or do you think that would limit your audience too much to the same crowd? 
I still haven't considered. <laughs> I, re I remember. I remember. I remember. Uh, one minute, I think the, the tax regulations in the Netherlands were changing, and I, I, the, there was the idea that it would be a huge amount of uh, extra registration and everything that would be needed and be really, really difficult. And so there was the idea then that, that um, yeah, that maybe it would be cheaper in a way to do everything for for free. And um, yeah, I, I, do, I do still. I think it would be, in a way, really, really great to be able to do that. But I, I think there's all, and when we in general keep our uh, prices very, very low. Um, but um, I, th I think there, there is always this uh, idea that that yeah, that maybe people should pay a, a, a little bit for th things and, and um, to kind of rec recognize the value of it but it, it's it's a real struggle the membership idea is 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 quite a is quite a good one well, uh, we do have so we have some, uh, <laughs> similar stuff already going on like what? like you can um, pay for uh, for a certain amount of money you can see a lot of concert with with a uh, with a reduction uh, we do that it's like a coffee thing. yeah well you can <laughs> just show your card your RFID and then uh, we can see who you are and, and what you've paid so far. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the, 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 the system was, uh, for instance, uh, Trouwer has, that, uh, well, they started in the beginning that you, you became a member and you can get into everything for free. But then the, the backside of it is that you have to, to, to uh, keep a lot of places reserved for the oh. potential visitors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. in the end, to limit your your, your Yeah. Audience. No. Well, we we have a, uh, we have really a lot of uh, volunteers um, working with us, and they, they can come uh, for free to everything, and also bring a bring a friend, and and that that is a really important uh, basis for us, and that they also organise uh, the same thing. Yeah, same. Yeah. But we do, we do the same thing now. But, talking about how we're not paying the artists enough. <laughs> um, and I mean, somewhere like Japan or in, in the States, everybody has a day job. Every musician has a day job. And just, you, you don't ask about it. It's <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in Europe, especially in the Netherlands, it's actually a quite special place where there are professional um, musicians. Um, but I'm wondering, what is, you know, how do we sustain this economy of within the experimental arts, you know, if, if the fees are going down, if we can't afford, uh, if, we, if we could only pay them door uh, gigs, you know, both as an organizer and a musician, what do you think would be sort of a, a, a feasible model to, to keep musicians also sort of um, encouraged to keep gigging and keep, um, yeah, playing and also, yeah, sustain a, a I don't think it is feasible without funding. I mean, I think yeah. the thing is, like, m most people <laughs> go in that, that, that end up making this, you know, if you, if you want to call this experimental music or whatever, you've got to be incredibly naive to think you're going to make any money out of it, either as an organizer or as a musician. And so, so it's sustained by a different type of, it's, there's a different kind of economy at work, and, and that's, I, it's, it's just, it, I don't think, I don't think that's necessarily going to change. I mean, we, we'd love to pay musicians more and we pay them as much as we can afford to, mm -hmm. but um, but it is that it's it, it's not <coughs> as as much as we we might want to make it expansive and get as big an audience as possible. I think you've got to accept that certain aspects of this may remain, relatively speaking, marginal. I mean, I, I don't think. Um, you know, I, th I think you can expand audiences. I think you can introduce new people to it, but um, but but it's not. I think mean, there just needs to be a mutual understanding from everybody's perspective that there's that you're getting something else from it, <laughs> and that that's that, that's what sustains people. I mean, it's the same it, when you say in Japan most people have a day job. But that's that's true of the majority of at least the, the London-based musicians that play at Cafe Otto. Um, some of them might make a living indirectly through the music, through, through teaching music or whatever, but, um, but 
that, that's yeah. I, I, I think it's 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 the it's the nature of, of what we're dealing with. So. Don't uh, my advice to any musician in the room that wants to be experimental. You're not getting rich from it, or even any money. No. So what? It's just money. Yeah. I mean, what do you have to do with money? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> if you've got funding. <laughs> I'm joking. Well, it's like Hank and me, we are musicians too, so this yeah. is what we do to, yeah. to get money. Yeah. For the rest, yeah. I'd love to get paid well if you play mm -hmm. somewhere, but it's not going to influence my decision to play in a place, because mm -hmm. the place and, and the environment is for me more important mm -hmm. than playing in some fucking black box mm -hmm. and nobody knows you when you come in. And you get paid well. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the, this is, <laughs> that's the thing that the, the stuff that's getting paid well is maybe not so much fun yeah. as, yeah. as yeah. other places. Yeah. It exists. Because it's really nice and you get paid well. It's out there. Uh, but it there, well, there is a, there is a question. <laughs> I mean, there is a question. Maybe I think I think one of the one of the things in the last uh, 15 years which has a big influences and, and, and changes the economy a lot is the concentration that there have, has been have been in cities on um, kind, of, kind of city marketing and things, and then the, the sort of huge development of, of festivals where where for you know over like. You know, like Sonic X, or I mean, but but where there's a there's a huge uh, concentration for for one weekend, and, and also artists can be paid very very well, but then in some way it it, it uh, makes it it can make it more more difficult to sustain something uh, throughout throughout the year, um, and and this is this has been sad a, a, a sad development as well, and I, I don't know. Um, how, how this will change if it goes further this direction, or it, it has to uh, it stops. So you're saying there's too much, fest too many festivals. Yeah, I think I think in a sense, or, or I think maybe the way people go to things changes a lot. That maybe people don't go to things very very regularly mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Also, also the cinema, for example, but but tend to go to more event focused things at, at festival. Um, Things, but but I, I don't know what um, and, and and I guess what we're all trying to do is sustain a, a really regular yeah. regular thing. Um, There's also some sort of thing of novelty. I mean, like yeah, yeah. I know that a lot of the London-based players go and play outside of London at the festival and maybe get well paid and get a big audience and play with us and they get a much smaller audience and they get some money from the door because yeah. there's because they're playing with us all the time, and, and, and the same in, in reverse of some of the Japanese musicians we bring over, for, for example, like, or um, what from, from, from different countries that we might bring somebody over and they might actually get as much smaller audience at home. And we, we often piggyback on the, on the back of festivals, so there'll be a, yeah. so somebody will come yeah. over for a big festival and they'll get well paid, and then they'll, they'll email us and say, Look, we're in Europe doing this festival, but we'd like to come and play at Cafe Otto as well. I mean, I mean, we, I mean it's, it's a very, um, I mean, we also piggyback also on the back of festivals, and we also have programmed uh, artists that we really love at festivals where, where they, they will have got a lot better paid and things. Yeah. So. Um, it goes both ways, yeah. I have a question for you. Um, so in a way, in this, in this uh, sort of discussion, we always uh, get to the point that institutions are eating everything, are englobating, <laughs> <laughs> are uh, englobating whatever, whatever type of uh, experimental art and music. At the end, uh, whatever independency and whatever, at the end, the institution is able to eat <laughs> and have it ingrubated. So even, I mean, the role of, um, of uh, these, these independent places uh, keeping their independency, but they, um, they have a very specific position, very specific position in the system, because it's, it's actually this position of uh, putting, making these musicians and artists going through the system because at the end all the musicians that comes playing at ca Cafe Otto, at Worm, they are going also to play to big festival or to Barbican or... Mm -hmm. So 
I mean, um, how difficult is this? I mean, uh, to be, to, to, at the end, pretend to be independent, but at the end, being part of the system, which is totally, like, eating you. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, first of all, I, I don't think that's entirely true because there's, there's a lot of stuff that we're doing that, that those large organizations wouldn't touch. I mean, and often they're sniffing around looking at what places like we're doing to, to get inspiration for their own programming because often the people programming these things aren't necessarily that imaginative or, or really know what's going on. Um, and, I, I, I mean, I, we haven't really been sustained... I mean, like, okay, there's the odd instance where some musician says to you, look, I'm, I'm in Europe because I'm doing this festival, can I come and play at Capiot as well? And, and, and sure, in, in those instances, we're being indirectly... We're, we're, we're being helped by those festivals indirectly. But, but that's, that's a tiny proportion of what we do. Um, I don't think... I, I don't think we'd, we're, in a, we're in a better situation because of, of these organisations. Well, I don't think they're helping... I don't, on, on the whole, I don't think they're helping us one bit. I don't think, you know, if, if, if the ICA, for example, went bankrupt tomorrow, I don't think that would be better or worse, or, 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 <laughs> or any of these places. I don't, think, I don't think any of them really have an impact on what we're doing. Mm. You know, there's, there's the odd instance where we get squashed. I mean, what's interesting in the UK is there's a lot of rumour and rumbling at the moment that some of these big organisations might be on the brink of, of, of going down. And some people are very nostalgic about them because maybe in the 60s or 70s they were quite important. Mm -hmm. But actually, I think if it, I think let them let them fall. I mean, I'm, I'm all up for those places going down because I think it creates space for other things to happen that are maybe more more urgent, more important. And a lot of these big organisations they survive off the name and they survive off the fact that you know a long decades ago they they were they were they were cutting edge and important. And mm -hmm. you look at much of what they're doing now, and it's, it's really insignificant. And, um, and yet, because they trade on this thing, they, they, they get funding. So um, I know I, d I don't think I, I, I don't think we're we I don't think we our survival is, is dependent on these places. And you know, very very occasionally we might get a little bit of we might be able to sort of nip somebody off who happens to be have come out of the country <laughs> through some other funding. Um, yeah, so I think it's... Uh, it was it's maybe a little less, less material, but uh, more on, on a conceptual level, like uh, being, being uh, ingobated, not, not, not by actual support, but actual... Uh,